This is Twit. So news broke yesterday that John Perry Barlow, founder of the Electronic Frontier Foundation, Freedom of the Press Foundation, as well as former longtime lyricist for the Grateful Dead, among many other things, uh, he, news broke yesterday that he passed away on Tuesday, the age of 70. And joining us to talk about his legacy and importance to the Internet as we know it today is John Battelle. John is the founder of Wired, Industry Standard, Federated Media, and Writer, and again, a bunch of other things. Welcome to the show, John. It's great to have you here. Thanks for having me. It's awesome having you here. So you wrote about your connection to Barlow, which began as his editor at Wired back in the 90s. What, what can you tell us about your earliest interactions with him and how that kind of developed over time? Well, I mean, Barlow was kind of an overwhelming, you know, human being. Um, he was kind of everything you wanted to be, um, you know, if you were an aspiring creative person. Um, and I was a very, I was this kind of the young guy at Wired. And um, uh, I met him through uh, my co-founders, Kevin Kelly and Louis Rossetto. Uh, and, and he was just bigger than life, um, wore cowboy boots, you know, had a lot of hair. Um, and he was Republican, which was just the weirdest thing. But he, he loved um, music, obviously. And I was a huge Dead fan. And so to, I felt like I was in royalty just being in his presence. Um, and then, uh, you know, as we started putting together the first issue of the magazine, um, somehow we convinced him to start writing for us. And that then I got to engage with his mind, you know, in, a, in sort of a deep way. And that way you only can when you kind of tear apart copy and put it back together again. Um, and uh, and that was both challenging and incredibly satisfying at the same time. Yeah, we were reading through uh, prior to the show an, an article from 93, February 93, called Jack in. From yeah, John Perry Barlow. So I'm sure, I'm sure you're, you're familiar with that, but it's well, that was he, like one of the first pieces that he did that where he became kind of what he's well known for in the internet world, uh, sort of a proselytizer, an evangelist for uh, you know for the liberties of cyberspace. Right. So I mean, what I I I'm just wonder what you think he might have thought about the internet right now. Like what, you know, which we're going to talk about in a few minutes and, and just the tech lash as many people are calling it because, you know, his manifesto was so inspiring, but there were so many things that didn't uh, happen that he, uh, that he <laughs> hoped for in the, uh, in the internet. Well, I think he and I share that frustration. Um, certainly the last few times I spoke with him, we, t we talked about it. Um, and the last time I spoke with him was a couple of years ago. And, you know, I, already by that point, it was pretty clear that, you know, Facebook and Google had won um, and that the open web was in uh, retreat uh, and seriously uh, endangered. But I think there's a sense of optimism that I still share uh, and that he embodied that, you know, you can't really ever kill the potential of the internet. Um, it's just impossible. Uh, and, and there's a sense that it's always going to be there and always there when we need it. And I have a feeling that that, uh, truth is going to be a very important one as we, you know, go through the, you know, very difficult issues we're struggling with now as a society, as it relates to the externalities of our current, you know, instantiation of the internet. Yeah. And realizing just that the, the power of, what we've created. <laughs> I right. if we can put that genie back right. in the bottle a little bit. Yeah. Um, but before we kind of dive further into that, I wanted to ask you a little bit as far as uh, the Barlow friends, which makes up a, a large part of, of what you wrote about, about Barlow. Right. Tell us a little bit about that. How did, how did that come to be? How did, how did you get added to this list? And uh, well, yeah, what did you learn about him through that? That's the best part. I have no idea how I got out of the list. I think it was, <laughs> You know, I think it's because, you know, I mean, I, he's had my email since 1992, yeah. um, since we did most of our work, you know, via phone and email. Uh, and at some point when, uh, you know, I don't know if it was the beginning of the list uh, or somewhere in the middle of it, but somewhere in the 90s, he added me to it. Um, and I just got a message in my inbox with this sort of very elaborate for the time formatting. You know, uh, all he had was ASCII, you know, um, uh, to to format it. But he made all these pictures and had all this cool stuff. And um, uh, and it just had this very remarkable, very raw, but but, the, you know, voice with these pearls that were in the middle of it, you know, almost like, you know, uh, couplets of poetry. Um, and I always loved getting them. Many times it was just a call to a party. 
He just wanted people to show up wherever he was and throw a party uh, for free, basically, um, you know, because he was in town, of course. Um, and <laughs> uh, and it turned out that that's exactly what everyone wanted. Everyone wanted Barlow in town and everyone wanted to go to a party where Barlow was kind of the guest of honor. And so it just happened everywhere he went. And he, he rarely was in one place very long. He seemed to travel more than he ever settled down. Uh, but Barlow's Friends was a way for him to occasionally rant about things that were on his mind, particularly politics, um, and also uh, just keep a wide, you know, far-flung community together. Uh, you know, and it, it 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 died down over the last five or six years, uh, unfortunately. But he did move it to Facebook for a while, ironically, um, and uh, and then the last missive came uh, just this morning, uh, announcing his death. <laughs> So I know you said that he was a Republican, uh, which meant something different in the 90s. I always thought of him as a libertarian. Like, did he did he remain a Republican throughout the years or did his political leanings change or was it something completely different? Than yeah, he he um, he pretty actively uh, uh, abandoned the formal Republican Party with the Bush administration, the second Bush administration. Um, and uh, from that point forward, I don't think he identified with a particular party. I think he used to say he was independent with a small I, but um, he certainly had libertarian political leanings, um, uh, but he was more of a humanitarian. Um, he had a list, which uh, Kevin Kelly published on Boing Boing today, of rules to live by if you want to be an adult. Um, and, and they were, you know, they were just so beautiful. I would uh, encourage anyone to go look at Boing Boing and check it out. Um, but I, I never really thought of him as a party person, as a you know political party person, as more than he was just deeply concerned with what was fair and what was right, uh, and how to comport yourself to ensure that that you know those values were upheld.